All right, so the US Open is over for another year and we have some massive changes in the rankings, especially down the bottom part of the rankings. Also, the race of the finals, AWWT finals, they're coming up pretty quick and 2,000 points on the line, that's a lot of points. So let's go have a look at who actually won last week at the US Open and also what's happened in the rankings. So on the women's side, Sabalenka beating Pagula in the final 7-5, 7-5 to win her third Grand Slam trophy and second of the year. And Yannick Sinner on the men's side, taking it out in straight sets against Fritz, 6-3, 6-4, 7 5, and he also lifted his second trophy of the year. And it's also the from the Australian Open winning his first, like Sabalenka, and now winning the second on hard courts. So both Sabalenka and Sinner dominating the hard courts at the slams this season. Okay, looking outside the top 10 of the players that have gone up in the rankings over the last couple of weeks. Tiafo making the semi finals of the US Open again. He goes up four spots to number 16 in the world. Jack Draper, he goes up to number 20 in the world, five spots higher than last week. So top 20 for Draper for the first time in his career after making a semi final run at the US Open as well. And Bedosa, she goes up nine spots to number 20 in the world after making the quarterfinals of this year's US Open. So some players there getting back up the rankings after a really good two weeks in New York. Players that went down to the rankings over the last couple of weeks, starting with Ben Shelton. He drops down four spots to number 17 in the world after losing the points from last year's semifinal. So a bit of a dip for him there. Madison Keys also dropping down the rankings 10 spots after making the semifinals last year and unfortunately not being able to replicate that this year. She goes down number 24 in the world. And Von Drusova, she goes down 11 spots number 33 in the world. Also, after dropping the points from last year's tournament, she didn't even get to play the US Open because of injury. So, a bit of a shame for her there. So, some players that did really well this time last year, unfortunately, unable to replicate that form. Let's start with the WTA rankings now, and no massive changes at the top. Sviantec, of course, still number one with Sabalenka at two, but there was a change between the Americans in the top ten, with Pagula going up three spots to number three, and Goff going down three spots to number six. So, they basically just switched over after, of course, Pagula making the final, and Goff unfortunately couldn't get to the final or replicate the win that she had last year in New York. We've got Rebecca at four, Paulini at five, of course, Goff at number six there. Zhang comes in at seven, but another American makes it to the top 10 with Navarro going up four spots to number eight in the world after making the semifinals in New York. Top 10 debut for her, pushing Krajikova down to number nine, Zachary down to number 10, and Ostapenko completely out of the top 10 for this week. So the Americans doing well this week at the US Open. It seems to be one of the biggest stories of the US Open and getting a boost to the rankings. Going over to the race of the finals, and we have a new person qualified, starting with Fiontech. She's qualified, but also Sabalenka is now qualified on points after this US Open. So she gets a nice boost in those points, but also she will be playing at the WTA Finals officially this year. Rebecca stays at three with Paulini at four, but a little bit of a change in the middle with Pagula going up two spots to number five, pushing Goff down to number six. Navarro went up to number seven with Collins falling down to number eight, which is two spots lower than last week. Zhang stays at nine and Krajikova comes in at number 10. Now, Krajikova does actually qualify if she stays within the top 20 of the race of the finals. So right now she is qualified because of winning Wimbledon. So the rule that was on the men's side for so many years is now applying to the ladies this year. So Krajikova, not qualified on points, but she has won Wimbledon, which will qualify her if she does. Finish within the top 20 of the rankings by the end of the season. Over to the men's side of things, and again, not too many changes at the top. Sinner, of course, staying at number one, extending his lead at number one. Getting to 11,000 points is crazy for him. We did have a little bit of a change with Zverev going up to number two after making the quarterfinals of the US Open. Two spots higher than last week. Algaris stays at number three, and Djokovic went down to number four because he couldn't replicate that win of last year. So he's dropped a couple of spots and he could be number five in the world in the next few weeks. So he really needs to start playing and winning some of these tournaments outside of the slams to keep that ranking high enough. Medvedev at number five with Rublev at six. And Tether Fritz back in the top ten after a few months. Five spots higher than last week after making the final of the US Open, pushing her catch down to number eight. Rude down to nine. Dimitrov down to number ten. And Dimonor falling out of the top ten completely. So great to see Fritz in the final and he makes the most of it with his ranking as well. Back in the top 10 for the first time in a little bit. Race to the finals now, and we've got some more players qualified. Sinner, he adds to his total, but Zverev and Alcaraz both qualifying for the end of year finals. So three spots down, only five to go. And with not that many tournaments left, it could be really interesting coming into the next couple of months on the tour. Medvedev, he's the next in line at number four. But Fritz, he goes up five spots from number 10 to number five with those massive points that he gained at the US Open, putting him in contention of an ATV finals spot. Rude, he goes down to number six with Rublev down to number seven. Diminol stays at eight. Djokovic went down two spots to number nine. So right now, if the ATP finals were next week, he wouldn't qualify, which is so weird to say Djokovic doesn't qualify for the ATP finals. And Dimitrov, he goes up three spots into that number 10 spot, pushing City Pass out of the top 10 completely. So Djokovic is the big story here because I don't remember the last time he missed an ATP finals campaign. So he's got to do some damage outside of the slams if he's going to qualify for the ATP finals because right now he's in danger. So there it is. That is the post-US Open rankings and all the things that have happened rankings-wise 
for the US Open, but let me know in the comments below. What's been the most exciting part of the US Open for you, or maybe just the Grand Slam season in general? Because of course, no more Grand Slam matches until January now. So no five setters, no best of five, none of that stuff for a couple of months. And now we go to the Asian swing. That's the big one that's coming up next. A lot of points off of grabs. Of course, Shanghai, the big one there. And then of course, we go back to Europe and do the hard court season again for the men. The ladies, they stay in Shanghai or they stay in Beijing for their tournament. And then they go to the WTA finals. So the season's starting to wrap up now and it gets pretty quick when uh, when we get back to the end of the year. So really interested to see who qualifies for these finals as well. But there it is. Sina, Sabalenka, US Open champions. And that's the rankings.